warm. May drop a few degrees during the eclipse. On Tuesday, mostly cloudy, still warm there. Possible shower, a high around 75 degrees. Right now, we have 60 degrees in Florissant, 62 degrees in St. Peter's, and 60 downtown at the Arch with clouds. I'm Stuart McMillan, KMOX News. This is the Green Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Goldschmidt swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Green Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Billikens win. Billikens win. Now from the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. What a great day to be a St. Louis on Saturday, April 6th. That was some day yesterday, and today you get Cardinal baseball all over again. That's the great thing about baseball is you have a game every day. Ali Marmel was at the Zach Brown show last night with Matt Carpenter and Daniel Descalzo. And Ali had a big smile on his face. I would, too, if I were at uh, Adam Wainwright's concert, but also if I had won the first two home games. And that's exactly what the Cardinals have done. Great start to their season. They started the whole thing. Then the slew women won, and then the, the Blues didn't hold up their end of the bargain. They lost at San Jose, but they had a win at the Dome, as just described in the news. You had City playing to a draw at City Park. I'm sure they're fine with that. We'll talk to Lutz Fan and Steel about that in just a little bit. But what a day. You know, what a day, really. I mean, all the things that happen in downtown St. Louis all at once, but also at Chaffetz Arena, at SIUE, where SLU played. What a great sports region we have. Honestly, I mean, think about just for a moment what we had yesterday. And I know there are some big cities in the country, but you tell me a city that had sports pumping throughout it like St. Louis did yesterday. Not even Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix has the Final Four, but, you know, what else is rolling there right now? I guess you got did the Diamondbacks play at home. I mean, you know, so, like, the, it's it's special around here. You can you can puff your chest out a little bit. You can hold your head up high if you're a St. Louis. And you live in a great sports town, and that won't be the last time. They'll all be playing down there again. There will be a day where the Cardinals, Blues, City, maybe even the Battlehawks, all have a home game at the same time or on the same day where you can just walk Clark and then take Broadway or Fourth up north to the Dome. I wonder how many people, if there's anyone out there, that hit all three. That did, I'm sure there are. That hit Cardinals, City, Battlehawks. That said, let's do all three. Let's leave the City game a little early. So we can watch some of the Battle Hawks. All three. That's that's a rough one. I know that's wild. Yeah. Now I don't think you could have squeezed in the Zach Brown show on top of that, but it's possible Zach didn't go on stage till nine. You would have missed Adam. Adam Wainwright was good last night. We'll talk to we'll get Ollie's review about that. Chris May was also at the show. We'll get his review at Chaffetz Arena, his home arena. Uh, what a day for Chris to talk about a smile on his face. Guy hires Josh Shirts officially. And then his women's team goes out and wins the WNIT championship. Not many teams get to finish a season cutting the nets down. Very few. Just a, a handful. Couple in men's, couple in women's get to do something like that. So congratulations to Rebecca Tillett's team. Chris May will be with us at 1030. The Cardinals, we'll talk to Ollie Marmel about them in six minutes. He is going to join us at 1015. Good day for Steven Matz. Good day for Yvonne Herrera. The battery was very good yesterday for the cards. Uh, Pedro Pajes has been called up, so we'll, we'll get the catching situation lined up with Ali and any injury updates that he has for us. John Mosellock will also follow that with an interview live at 11.30 here on the show. For the SLU women, they beat Minnesota 69-50, to and they win the first WNIT championship in program history. That's coming up with Chris May, as well as a conversation about Josh Shirts. And I think that Chris, uh, I'm not sure how many interviews he's done, if any, uh, but uh, this will be good to catch up with him live here on KMOX at 1030. We like to reserve that little segment for SLU there at 1030. At 1045, the president of McKelvey Homes, Jim Brennan, with a big announcement about a new charity that they were supporting. He was also there last night at the Cardinal Glennon Live event, Glennon Live with Zach Brown Band and Adam Wainwright. 11-15, Lutz, Fan, and Steel. And Lutz with a 0-0 draw. Uh, the, both goaltenders were very good. Uh, Dallas played without a couple of key players, both out with injuries, and they were able to survive a 0-0 game. So congratulations to them. But I think City will be okay with a point. You want to start getting some three-pointers here. But it was an exciting, if a 0-0 game can be, actually an exciting scoreless draw 
at City Park, where they have not lost this season, and they've only lost one time in the last 10 matches. So that was pretty pretty great. And they'll host Austin on Sunday. Nice little Sunday game for you, MLS, next weekend. That's, of course, on Y98 FM. And then the Battle Hawks. I mean, you just can't say enough about what they do down there. They draw 40,000 people. And yeah, you know, there is a little bit of that Stan Kroenke hate that still exists. It's a, a, a bit of a message, if you will, a digit, if you will, to, to Stan uh, for what they think about him leaving. But this is a great sports town. It's a great football town. This is what people like to do. They like to tailgate, and they like sports around here. They go to soccer games. They go to baseball games. They go to football games. This is a football town. Come out here on Friday night. Go look at these high school states running around out on the field. This is a football town. Don't let anyone tell you differently, ever. I mean, it just is. And they put 40000 in the dome for a UFL game. And again, I think the UFL is still relatively new to people. The Battle Hawks roster is a little more familiar. you got some of the same players coming back. But the whole experience is still very new. And the fans are like, whatever, we're buying in, 40000 Let's go. Let's go party. And they know. They understand what it means to fill the dome in downtown St. Louis. For downtown to take on all of those people is great. And the Battle Hawks won the game. They put on a nice show for them, won on a last-second field goal, and they win at 27-24. Probably the UFL should think a little bit differently. Maybe they should have opened the season in St. Louis. I know they're going to close the season in St. Louis, but maybe they should think about other cities that don't have NFL. Maybe that's a nice little pattern that they could follow. You know, I mean, this is still the largest market without an NFL team, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I think that it was great. To, again, I was at the Zach Brown show, but I saw plenty of highlights, saw the video. That is fun for me uh, to be able to see that happen. Battle Hawks lost the first one at Michigan 18-16, but they win at the Dome. That is the largest crowd to see a spring football game. Not a, you know, I get it, like at Alabama for their spring game, they draw like 90,000 people. This is an organized football game in the spring against an opponent. There's never been a larger crowd, 40,317 fans at the Dome. Someday, will they fill that to capacity? Maybe. They have to be able to staff it, of course, and have it fully staffed and fully cleaned and you know all the food and drink and everything else running through there to handle 66,000 people, but they certainly have done it before because when the Rams were good, they filled the place, and when the Rams started taking talent away and tanking, fans still came out. Football town. Ali Marmel is back after this. The Cardinals manager next on KMOX's Sports on a Sunday morning, sponsored by Gray Bar. Baseball is back. Basketball is heating up, and the NFL draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Download the free Odyssey app today. It's perfectly normal to buy new things. In fact, it's fun. And that's how we accumulate old, worn-out things. Not fun. Clutter and junk collect in corners and piles. In attics and basements. In closets and sheds. And in garages. Boy, does junk gather in garages. The average garage is a convention center for junk. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. You're going to get a brand new garage. You're going to get a bunch of new closets. You're going to get a new shed. You're going to find space you didn't know you had. Best of all, you're going to get fresh air freedom. All you have to do is point. You're about to have a big home. A happy home. Where you can fill your lungs with fresh air. Freedom. What you need is freedom. You're going to laugh and smile. 
you're going to dance and sing. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. Past results afford no guarantee of future results. Every case is different and must be judged on its own merits. At Under Law, we deliver big judgments for the little guy. We've negotiated over $5 billion in settlements. Under Law takes on the biggest industries and holds them accountable. We've won millions for victims of truck accidents, drunk driving crashes, and workers' compensation. Call Under Law, 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. Okay, now I'm ready. Ready? What are you ready for? To call Jerry Kelly Heating and Air. I thought you already called him. You have to be kidding me. Jerry Kelly would already be here if I had called. Isn't that the idea? We need this fixed. Yeah, but I wasn't ready. They get here too fast. Jerry Kelly is fast and good. So when you're good and ready, make sure your home is as comfy as can be. Call jerrykelly.com. They're fast and they're good and they got it going on. Jerry Kelly. You would spend a lot more time in your backyard if you had a great outdoor space, like something designed and built by Chesterfield Fence and Deck, the sign you have the very best. If you've been needing to replace that deck that's been splintering and may even be a danger, you should consider maybe Vecadeck Vinyl Decking. The new colors are Espresso, Hazelnut, Cayenne, and Storm. And Pewter is the new color for 2024. That never needs to be stained, and they look amazing. Chesterfield Fence and Deck can do fences, of course, decks, custom sunrooms, screen rooms, pergolas, patios, retaining walls, windows. They do it all, and they will make your outdoor space the place that everybody wants to get together and celebrate, or maybe just your own little peaceful place all your own. Give them a call and mention me, Debbie Monterey, and they'll offer you 48 months interest-free financing. Stop by their beautiful showroom or find them online at chestervillefence.com. Now, the manager's chat, presented by Seitman Cancer Center. Seitman Cancer Center, national leaders in cancer care. Tom Ackerman with you in our studios of KMOX Radio, the home of the St. Louis Cardinals, who yesterday did this. A big lead for Anderson. He goes for second base. Here's a ground ball headed toward the third baseman. Arenado throws across a Redbird winner. Garcia grounds out third to first, and this ballgame has come to an end. And the Cardinals have won back-to-back series as they light up St. Louis after a Redbird winner. Three to one today over Miami. Save for Ryan Helsley. Nice play there by Arnado, by the way, to finish that game. Cardinals win it three to one. Joining us is the aforementioned Oliver Marmel, the manager of the Cardinals. Good morning, Ollie. Good morning. How are we doing? Doing great. I mentioned uh, that the Adam Wainwright performance last night was very good at the Zach Brown Band Show. You were there supporting uh, Glennon Live. Good times. It, it was a good time. We were there. Myself, Scalzo, a couple other guys. I went out with the Schumacher and Carp, and it was a good group out there supporting Wayno. He did a really nice job. It was a it was a fun night. I like that you're hanging with Schumacher. That's cool. And the manager <laughs> of the Marlins, he's having a tough time right now. He's zero and nine. I mean, you're going to try to put it on him today and finish the sweep, but he'll turn that thing around. He'll get. He's a good yeah, manager. He will, man. Yep. He's a he's a very good manager. I love that guy. He does a really nice job, and um, that group will be fine, man. He leads well, so. Um, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you do, do more people talk to you out in public when you get a win like that? Like, hey, buddy, hey, Ollie, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Even last year, as as rough as it was in public, people are, are extremely nice here in St. Louis. Um, very supportive uh, to myself and my family whenever we're out and about. Um, so yeah, zero complaints there. That's good. Yeah, no, it is. It's great sports town. You know how passionate they are. You know how much they Absolutely. love the Cardinals. And you love the Cardinals. I mean, you've been with this organization for a long time, and you know how big it is. So I asked you before the ceremony how you would soak it in. Tell me, before we get into these last couple of games, what sure. Thursday was like for you. It was awesome. Um, it was just good to be back on the field here at Bush in front of our own fans. Uh, it was a long road trip, uh, a, a tough one from a – who we were playing standpoint um, from going to the Arizona for the exhibition games to LA to San Diego. So it was really good to be home. Um, but then I, I love coming around home plate and, and shaking the, those guys' hands and just uh, the responsibility that comes with that. We've talked about it quite a bit um, and getting to talk to holiday and Tony and, and that, it was, it was just awesome. 
Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, what a great, great scene. And then, you know, tough game. I mean, Skip gave you a tough game and you had a deficit to make up late and you did. You explode for five late runs to pull out of there with an 8-5 victory. It tells you something about your team and you started five very young players and relatively inexperienced players, although some of them have been starting for a little while, but a young team out there that got the job done. No doubt. And uh, that morning was, uh, it was a busy morning, man. We had a uh, trying to figure out if Contreras can go Donovan and, and, and both of them needed the extra day carp with the oblique goes on the IL. We try to get pie here. We throw in two lefties uh, in Siani and Burleson in the lineup and, they did a really nice job. Even that first play of the game, Siani comes and makes that diving play and just sets the tone for, for the defense for the day. Um, he did a really nice job. Burleson with a big hit. Um, different guys are contributing, and uh, there's a lot of fight in this group, and it's been fun to watch them. Absolutely. You mentioned Contreras. Anything new on him? What What, what is the latest? Yeah, he's, feel, he's feeling better. Um, yesterday was better than the, the previous day. Um, I, I'm going to get with him here shortly and figure out what's next. But our hope is that he's able to go tomorrow by staying away from him today. Okay, gotcha. Herrera has been good. And I think that this was the plan is to have Herrera ready to go. And boy, he shows some power. Even that near grand slam in L.A. too. I mean, he this guy can hit the ball. He can drive it. And also Pajes called up. So tell us about those two just at the ready. Yeah, absolutely. Herrera's done a really nice job defensively. He does a great job behind the plate. Uh, his preparation has been a ton better, and, and he's more confident with it now at this level. Offensively, he, he's a big bat. He drives the ball all over the park, uses the whole field, and just takes a professional bat. He knows what he's doing in the box. Pajes is a great story, man. This is a guy that I would say middle of last spring training just really changed his work ethic. Um, and rather than having the mentality of, man, I, I'm not sure if I'll ever get there. He just, man, I'm, I'm not going to have any regrets and I will put everything on the line. And if I don't get there, then so be it. But I'm, I'm going to make it hard on them. So it's really cool to, to be able to call him up and see him walk up to the office here at Bush Stadium and, and congratulate him because he's put in a lot of work over the last several years to be able to make this possible. That's exciting, and and it has to be incredibly exciting Absolutely. for his family. I mean, wow, that, that's yes. really, really great. Uh, then you look at your outfield. You know, you've had to deal with so much there. Edmund, you've known, was going to be gone for a while. Carlson, you found out right before the Major League season starts, the regular season, he's out for a while. Uh, we knew, of course, that Newt Bar was going to be out for a little bit, although it looks like Lars is very close to returning for you. Yeah, I spoke with Lars this morning on my drive in, and he's uh, health wise, he's feeling a lot better. Um, he's trying to get some at bats underneath his belt. You, I mean, if you think of it, I think he got nine at bats in spring before we had to shut him down. So he really didn't have a true spring training. So he's trying to get his rhythm and, and timing. Um, he's going to DH a full game today in uh, Indianapolis for Memphis, and he's going to call me after the game and, and we'll talk through what's next for him. Of course, everyone wants to ask me, and, and therefore you, what you're going to do. When guys start to get healthy, I'm like, well, you look, I mean, a good problem to have, huh? <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of outfielders. You will say Scott and Walker took the job and ran with it though. Didn't they? They've done a nice job. Man, I'm so proud of, uh, of Scott that, um, to come up here, be sent down and, and to, Hey, start your season in triple a, and then to, to have the need immediately and have him back up here and for him to step up the way he has, he should be proud of the work he's done because defensively he is putting on a show i mean some of the balls that he gets they may look easy but i'm telling you it's uh they're not easy plays the one last night was was amazing and saved us some runs but um i'm super proud of uh, both of them walker's put in a ton of work man you think about where he was last year defensively to some of the things that we're seeing this year and it's a completely different player and he's going to continue to build on that i mean he has the traits to become a good outfielder he's super athletic and he cares and those are two things that you want so um, he's putting it together, and um, both of them have done a really nice job. Here's that play by Victor. The 2-2 pitch is hit sharply to center field. Victor Scott on the move. He looks up over his shoulder, and he makes the play up against the center field wall. On the run, straight away from home plate. He threw the glove up, made the catch, and ran into that center field wall 400 feet from home plate. Nice play, Victor Scott. He makes it look easy. It's not often that a play makes me yell out loud, but I went, oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it was just crazy good uh, by Victor Scott. So uh, let me ask you pitching before we go. Just a couple minutes left with Ali Marmel. Um, I guess I should start with Sonny Gray because I know, and I don't know if anything is final on that, what his next move is. 
Yeah, we're actually going to sit down as soon as we hang up here and, and discuss uh, that very topic of what, uh, what's that going to look like for him um, moving forward, and we should have an answer here shortly. Gotcha. And then yesterday, Stephen Matz, again, another uh, step forward for him. He looked pretty good. Looked really good. Pitching with confidence, and that's the biggest thing for him. Fastball's coming out of his hand really well. Um, the velo's there. It's moving well. And he's pairing it with that little cutter slider changeup mix. And um, he's getting some defensive swings, and he's he's doing a really nice job. So we're continuing to build him up. I believe 81 pitches first time out. He threw 85 or so yesterday. We'll get him up to 90, 95 next time out. And um, then let him loose. But um, – we're seeing a really confident version of uh, of Stephen Matz. Definitely, and and you know one thing that you and I talked about in the last to visit here was the fact that when pitchers go deep, your bullpen not only has fewer innings to pitch, but they settle into roles. And I know that's important for you. Is seeing it, it really that? Is that is. Yep, that's happening. It, it is happening, and, and once we get healthy, same thing will happen to our lineup. Where it, it'd be great for guys to just know here's where I'm playing and here's where I'm hitting in the lineup and our bullpen is shaping up that way as well where guys are defining their roles and and Helsley being a three out ninth inning guy and Jojo and Kittredge splitting that eighth and seventh based on situation and, and where we are as far as creating lanes in that lineup and uh, and Gio could get in there and stop an inning Libby could come in and stop an inning I mean they're starting to define these roles themselves and April's a, an interesting month when it comes to managing the pen because you want to you want to make sure you, you have these guys in May and June, July, and all the way through. And there's a lot of injuries in, in April and it's coming out of spring training. So we want to be able to use these guys appropriately, and uh, we'll continue to do so. Kyle Gibson gets the start today. Cardinals and Marlins at one fifteen pregame at 12.20 here on KMOX. Ollie, we appreciate this. Thanks for being with us. No, I appreciate it. Cardinals manager Oliver Marmel with us on KMOX. When we come back, the athletic director at St. Louis University. What a day he had. Chris May is with us. Sports on a Sunday morning on the home of the Cardinals and the Billikens, KMOX. If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels, New York. And for psychics, think California Psychics. You want the best, you go to the best. At California Psychics, home of free spirits and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. That's why we guarantee if your reading is life-changing, it's free. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. KMOX Weekend at Your Service. Sponsored by Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Installation. Hey guys, Glover here with my friends Mark and Neil Gelman from the Gelman team of EXP Realty. Selling your home, every situation is unique. Find the best options that are right for you from the real estate team who offer more options. My friends Mark and Neil Gelman, check out the only agents that I trust at thegelmanteam.com. Tired of those pesky moments when you're streaming your favorite shows? Well, say hello to i3 Broadband's 100% fiber optic network with parental controls. You can manage your kids' screen time, filter content, and keep an eye on their online adventures. All with no annual contracts or hidden fees. Just insanely fast internet and a no-risk 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 877-976-0711 or log on to i3 broadband.com slash STL. We're local, reliable, and proud to serve St. Louis. After a long winter, your lawn is going to be starving this spring. It's hungry, so it's time to feed it with Scott's four-step program available at Cotton's Ace Hardware. The four-step includes weed prevention, and each season, the right amount of food to keep your lawn happy, healthy, and green, and the envy of the neighborhood. You can either get the 5,000 square foot package or the 15,000 square foot package and get a $20 gift card to Cotton's Ace Hardware. Do not not neglect your lawn. Get started on the four step today at Cotton's Ace Hardware. Our $79 garage door tune up extended through April. Is your garage door old and whining for attention? Overhead Door Company of St. Louis will make it all better. They'll perform their full 26 task garage door tune up for just $79 extended through April. 
That's just $79 for up to three garage doors and openers. You need this done once a year, so why not now? And for just $79. Schedule now at OverheadDoorStLouis.com. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. It's almost time for your furnace to go to sleep and your air conditioner to kick in for a humid spring. Great time to call Comfort Solutions Heating and Cooling for a checkup, preventative maintenance, or even system replacement. Comfort Solutions, with 30 years of experience, is a reputable, reliable, and knowledgeable Lennox dealer. Lennox, an outstanding brand for more than a century, but Comfort Solutions can repair any make or model, offering 24-hour service, nights and weekends, and free estimates. It's ComfortSolutionsSTL.com or call 314-968-9900. What keeps you up at night? If it's a new diagnosis or an aging parent or just being home alone, our St. Louis-based ACM Care can help. Their RNs will listen to you, advocate for you, and get you through this. ACM Care is a nonprofit based right here in St. Louis. They've been helping St. Louisans for over 24 years, and they want to help you too. The first call is free. You can reach them at 314-293-0697 or acmcare.org or Google them. ACM Care will get you care. The Doctors of Ophthalmology Associates pleased to welcome Dr. Samuel Berry to the practice, cornea surgeon with the latest knowledge and techniques for advanced eye care. 314-966-5 Bo Matthews for Reinhold Electric. When you need electrical services or repairs, call on Reinhold Electric. Whether it's residential, commercial, or industrial, and with spring storms in the Midwest, it can be very dangerous and you have to have your power. Get an inline generator. Reinhold Electric can get that for you and get it hooked up so you'll be ready because when the power goes out, your power can stay on. Call 314-631-1158. That's 314-631-1158 online at reinholdelectric.com. Tell them Bo sent you. This is Chad Clayman with ClaymanGroup.com, K-L-A-M-E-N Group.com, where we buy property as is. Do you have a property that is vacant? Maybe it's been sitting empty for years. Maybe it's been sitting empty for a month. Well, we're interested in buying vacant properties. If you have a property sitting vacant, you're at risk of damage. You're paying insurance. You're paying taxes while it is not being utilized. We are interested in making you an as-is cash offer, and we can close on your timeline. Please reach out to K-L-A-M-E-N group.com. Welcome back to the Green Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Oh, Smith swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Gray Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Billikens win. Billikens win. Once again, from the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. What a display of energy and effort for SLU. The St. Louis Billikens win it. 11 of the last 12 games to take home the WNIT championship. What a scene, CBS Sports Network with the call. And joining us on the line is the athletic director at St. Louis University. What a day for him and his university. That's Chris May. Hello, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. I wrapped up the evening in your building, as you did as well, to see the Zach Brown band play and Adam Wainwright on a day when the women weren't allowed to play in there because there was a concert. Uh, they play at SAUE. They win, then they get honored at the concert. They got announced there. It was a special day for everybody. What a victory. What a performance. 69 to 50, Chris. Yeah, it was uh, – what, what a great run for, you know, Rebecca and the team and, and their postseason. Uh, they just got something about postseason. But yesterday, when you go in and you, you take it to a Big Ten team like we did yesterday – uh, could have been more proud. Could have been more proud of Kyla McMakin in her final college game, and she did such a great job as a Billiken. Peyton Kennedy, the 
most outstanding player of the tournament was just an absolute machine. And, and really the, uh, the energy in Julie Martinez, I mean, unbelievable 10 boards off the bench. Uh, so it was great to see our women, uh, two years in a row cut nets down. That was, uh, that's pretty, pretty great for our program. And it's just another step in the development. You know, I've been around that team a lot, as you know, and some of those players were brought over by Rebecca from Longwood. Some of those players did not play for Rebecca, but they bought in, they gelled as a team, and that is a tribute to the coach, isn't it? It for sure is. And uh, Rebecca and I spoke, I I think, we we think they played their best defensive game of the year yesterday against a big, strong, physical Minnesota team. And uh, she, uh, she has a way, the way she teaches the game, the way she brings them together, uh, really with the goal of playing their best basketball at the end of the season. Uh, I think it really showed uh, in this WNIT. They were they were close. We had uh, Marquise got hurt in the A-10 tournament uh, when we got beat. And uh, so th- they clearly continue to get better and better. Just, but to see the joy in those kids' faces and uh, the accomplishment that they that they earned yesterday, it was a really great day for our women's program. And then saw them in, in the arena last night as the crowd acknowledged uh, acknowledged the championship before the concert last night. It was it was just a great day for our women's team. It was very very special, without a doubt. How did you find Rebecca Tillett? Well, you know we. Uh, we went into the market and uh, how I actually how I got her name I got her name from Gino, uh, Gino Ariema. He uh, I had talked to I talked to Gino I talked to Don Staley I talked to some of the the great ones in women's basketball, and uh, he came to me and said, "Hey, there's somebody at Longwood that you really need to talk to." And uh, you know, from the minute we spoke, it was real clear that our values and our vision for women's basketball were very similar. And uh, I think, uh, you know, her first two years, uh, you know, the results show for themselves. But I think uh, the best is clearly yet to come. I think she's building an amazing foundation with our team, with our program, how we want to play. And uh, the future is very, very bright for our women's basketball team. Chris May is with us, athletic director at St. Louis University, who has also landed a new men's basketball coach. Josh Schertz, officially named yesterday led Indiana State to a 32-win season, their best year since 1979 when Larry Bird was shooting buckets in Terre Haute. And this team is dynamic, and now their coach comes over and perhaps some of the players. But first, I want to get to the coach and tell us how this journey and this search took place. Well, it, it uh, yeah, it was quite a journey, I'll tell you that. But, um, you know, there were – what was really gr- – great about it and anytime you go through a change it's it's not easy um there are people you worked with that you care for that are really good people that it just we just couldn't get to where we needed to get to so we go into the search and we had our we had uh we had a short list of people um you know right away and uh you know josh was josh was at the tight of the top of a short list and but what was fascinating about the the journey was we heard from many really high level people in uh in college basketball. And uh, when you go in, when you start calling and making calls and you start talking to people in the game and you start talking to people in the game about Josh, uh, it became very evident that uh, what he brought to the table, um, we felt was a really great mix for what we were looking for. Um, you know, we, we were first and foremost looking for uh, someone with a lifetime I had, had an old AD coach tell me one time, it's all about lifetime batting percentage and uh, lifetime win percentage. And, and Josh is just one. I think he's, I think his lifetime percentage right now is like 789. Um, he did such a great job at Lincoln Memorial, such a great job at Indiana State. So, you know, he took two programs uh, that hadn't, weren't in a great space and turned them, turned Indiana State fast and won a lot of games. Um, you know, you look at, you look at Josh, this is his sixth time winning 30 games in a season. Um, so looking for people who have had high levels of winning. Then you look at, uh, we wanted, you know, what, what are their efficiencies? Uh, I, I study offensive and defensive efficiencies a lot. And, uh, and it was a, it's an area that we need to get better at. And uh, his numbers just jump off the paper. I mean, it's off the charts how efficient his teams play. And uh, then, then you look at how they, how connected they are with their team. You look at how connected they are with with the young people that they work with, 
And I think when you see what, when you saw Josh with the season they had this year and, and the connection he had with his student athletes was something truly special. And then you just start talking to guys who uh, may have called their games and, you know, on TV, you start talking to people who've been in their press conferences, you start talking to people in the community and everybody to a person, you start talking to athletic directors in the league, you start talking to commissioner, you talk to a lot of people and everybody says, this guy is a flat out winner. And if he were at SLU, he could ignite that place. And so, uh, you know, you go on and on, you talk to national, then, then you take a step to the national people. You talk to, I talk to uh, whether it's Jay Billis or you talk to Brad Stevens or Dusty May and all these people. And they all talk about the high level of work and the focus on the commitment to excellence that Josh has. And it just started to fit. And so, um, you know, we got, we, we targeted real, real narrowly at a guy we thought we could, that could be great here. Um, the more I've talked and worked with Josh, you, you, you know, from a start, his value, he's a value driven leader, similar to our program and what we believe he builds trust real fast. He's committed to excellence. Um, but his real connected connectivity with his team, with the community, um, is, I think unbelievably exceptional. And I think he's going to do great things here at St. Louis. So we are so proud to have Josh coming to be our head coach. I'm going to meet him in the office this afternoon. We got the big press conference open to the public in shape at arena tomorrow at 10, but this is a, uh, this is a great moment for our program and we couldn't be more proud to be welcoming Josh and Natalia's wife and the boys uh, to come join the Billiken community. And uh, you know, just last night at the concert, I can't tell you how many people, uh, you know, came up and congratulated and we're so fired up for both our women's, our women's team and for Josh shirts coming to be our men's coach. So it was, uh, it's a great time for us. I'll know that he's going to say this tomorrow and answer this question tomorrow. But my question is what attracted him to SLU? I mean, I think it says a lot about St. Louis university that he chose you. Well, you know, he'll, he'll answer that better, but, uh, we believe and, and, you know, on the release, he said some things that uh, I, a couple of things I think really are really important. We've got unbelievable alignment in supporting men's basketball. Um, we've been able to put the uh, assets together to really compete at a high level. Um, you walk into the O'Loughlin Family Champion Center, it sends a message. And I can't wait to welcome his family into it today. Um, he's seen all the videos. He's seen, <laughs> uh, but um, he, I think he'll tell you he believes we can be an absolute elite men's basketball program here in St. Louis. That's our vision. Our vision is to win a 10 championships and make runs in the NCAA tournament with the ultimate prize of getting to a final four and winning the big one. And so um, I think, uh, I think he believes that we can do it there. We believe we can do it with him. Uh, we think he's the right leader to take us to that step. And uh, we, we couldn't be more proud. I couldn't be more proud to be uh, welcoming he and his family here today. I know my first question that I asked in the open about players or what I suggested about players is still in development, is it not? I mean, if you would be able to uh, see if some of his players could join, would that still an unknown? Well, Tom, in today's world of, you know, who knows? Who knows? Um, you know, those... Those are uh, deep relationships that uh, are built and, you know, you got to, Josh is so uh, appreciative and uh, uh, appreciative of what Indiana State, uh, the opportunity it gave him and what he was, he was able to do. Um, but at the end of the day, young people often play for coaches. And so, you know, we'll see how that develops in today's world of the portal. Uh, young people can transfer and play, you know, as long as they're moving along academically towards a degree, they can play, they can move and, and, uh, and it's just a new, it's a new environment in college basketball, but it's also an environment that Josh and I have talked about uh, a lot in how to manage the portal and how, what it's going to take. And we feel really great about where we are and what the prospects look like in building a, uh, a championship team for the Billikens real fast. What a day. What a day. Saturday, they're finally able to officially announce Josh Schertz and the women win the WNIT championship. I'll tell you what, Chris, very, very few teams get to end a year cutting nets down. I mean, uh, you can count them on one hand. So nope. pretty, pretty no impressive. And, 
and it's it's just one of those it's one of those great moments where it's a part of building a program. And uh, when Rebecca and I spoke right away, they were at the A10 tournament. We spoke about you know what do we think about the WNIT, and we're like, yeah, let's roll the sleeves up and go. And the kids were fired up to play, and they're fired up to keep getting better. They go beat two Big Ten teams. Um, that uh, that's a big big step for our program. It's it's uh, as Rebecca spoke yesterday. The the end goal is to be in the NCAA tournament, and make runs with the women as well. But this is a step in that maturation and growth that we feel really great about. Thank you very much for doing this. We'll see you on the Chaffetz Arena floor tomorrow morning. You got it, Tom. Thank you, and hopefully all Billica Nation will come join us. It's going to be a great day. I'm sure they will. That's Chris May, the athletic director at St. Louis University. I also noticed that I received an email from SLU yesterday asking me if I wanted to buy season tickets. So they are they are already pumping that uh, marketing arm of the university's athletics department as well they should. Uh, that's going to be a fun atmosphere. I'd probably jump on that now if you can. 1046 quick break back with more sports on a Sunday morning on KMOX sponsored by Graybar. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called the ugly truth about timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. 10 years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your time share or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-329-2121. That's 800-329-2121. 800-329-2121. It's perfectly normal to buy new things. In fact, it's fun. And that's how we accumulate old, worn out things. Not fun. Clutter and junk collect in corners and piles. In attics and basements. In closets and sheds. And in garages. Boy, does junk gather in garages. The average garage is a convention center for junk. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. You're going to get a brand new garage. You're going to get a bunch of new closets. You're going to get a new shed. You're going to find space you didn't know you had. Best of all, you're going to get fresh air freedom. All you have to do is point. You're about to have a big home. A happy home. Where you can fill your lungs with fresh air. Freedom. What you need is freedom. You're going to laugh and smile. You're going to dance and sing. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. Broadcasting from the underlying three lawyers. Get Jim.com studios. KMOX. Welcome back to the Gray Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Old Schmidt swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Gray Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Billiken's win! Billiken's win! Once again, from the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. Welcome back to the show. It is Sports on a Sunday morning on KMOX. Wow, great to visit with Ali Marmel, with Chris May. Both of them at the show last night. What a day we had with Cardinals and the Blues on the road. But City, the Battlehawks, everybody played. Slew women, 
Really nice day in St. Louis. And also playing at Chaffetz Arena was the Zach Brown Band. Opening was Adam Wainwright, and Adam did a terrific job. In fact, I was really uh, pleased that they asked me to introduce Adam. And I've known Wayno since he was a rookie, and you know, to be able to, to share that moment with him briefly, just to be up on stage and say, now on stage, Adam Wainwright, it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, and, and he killed it. He played a half-hour set and was great. And in the house also was our next guest, the president of McKelvey Homes, Jim Brennan, who was also on the board of directors of Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital, which that show benefited. And I know you had a great time. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks for being there. And thanks for raising a whole bunch of money. Not only did you introduce Adam, but you started off the funding need, which I think set a new record. We raised a million and a half bucks last night just at the funded need to help those kids that need health care that don't have the resources to pay for it themselves. Cardinal Glennon, how do they pull this off? I mean, they have these huge shows. Zach Brown, last year it was Tim McGraw. I mean, and Brad who, Paisley. Paisley. I'd say, uh, uh, my wife, Rose, is sitting right next to me here. She's loved country music for years. And uh, I think I've converted over to country after last night's Zach Brown concert. He yeah. was fabulous. He's awesome. And I told Wayno, you, right? What can that guy not do? Maybe he should run for president. I don't know. <laughs> well, that could be in his future. Wayno is just very wholesome, you know, and uh, somebody told me, I can't remember who it was, like maybe he needs to have an edgy song in there, you know, just to like round it out. But there's, he was so good. I mean, they the the chord progressions, the writing, it was tight, a great band behind him. He sounds good. His guitar is good. The lighting was good. It was big time. I mean, Adam delivered last night, as he always did as a Cardinal when the lights were on. He he really did. And uh, I tell you, I don't know what the name of the song was, but he talked about his son and how important it is. You could see how passionate his, he is about everything he does. Uh, Adam helped us with the Homers for Health years ago at Cardinal Glennon, which we raised money for every home run hit with Matt Holiday and Leslie Holiday. And uh, Rose and I got to meet him down in Jupiter, and he's the real deal. What a nice guy he is. And Matt Carpenter, who was there last night, uh, I would love to get a selfie of him. Uh, but uh, there was a whole line of people, and he's so gracious allowing it. So I just welcomed him back to St. Louis. Uh, we've just been so blessed with our Cardinals here. Absolutely. I kind of whiffed on getting a picture with Wayno, And for that matter, I saw Wayno and Zach talk to each other, meet each other backstage, and I didn't get a picture of that either. I just like, you know, being backstage, I didn't know you were supposed to Start you, taking pictures you, of everybody. How do you get back there? I was. I they wouldn't know. let me. I tried to get back know. there, but no. it was it was cool nonetheless. Um, the other thing that you're doing, and again, thank you for all you do for Cardinal Glennon, but you have continually raised money for charities in St. Louis through your business, McKelvey Homes. Tell me about this last one, Ronald McDonald Foundation. You've raised a lot of money just in this last quarter. Well, uh, Tom, uh, my parents taught taught me that it's important to give back to the community and my wife rose who's sitting here next to me always says no one should be hungry no one should be without health care and no one should not have a place to live and so ronald mcdonald house takes care of people that have children that are in uh, hospitals and where do they stay and so dan harbaugh is a good friend he's done a fabulous job and building a new facility now between Cardinal Glenn and Ann's St. Louis Univers or St. Louis uh, Children's Hospital. And so uh, he asked us for help. And for every home we sold in the first quarter, uh, McKelvey Homes is giving $1,898 uh, to the Ronald McDonald House. And I'm happy to say we sold 32 homes. So I've got a check uh, for 60736 bucks. I think it is, wow. uh, for Ronald McDonald House. That's and, big uh, time. We started that program last year with you, Tom, really, on Camo X, doing something special, and uh, contributed to four different charities last year. And I'm happy to report the second quarter, what we're going to do is support Habitat for Humanity here in St. Louis. Uh, Kimberly McKinney just does an outstanding job. They've currently got 28 homes being built in St. Louis, and it's really a, a, a helping hand. Not only do they, uh, require the people to put in 300 hours of sweat equity on every home. They train them how to budget, how to maintain their home, and it's really a helping hand. 
So we're proud to be associated with Supported Habitat for Humanity for several years. And uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful organization, keeping the money here locally in St. Louis to help those have a home of their own. And, you know, we're, we're blessed that we're able to build homes for people, but there's nothing like having your own home. It is, without a doubt, the American dream. And why do you donate 1898 for every home sold? Because it's the year that you were founded, 1898. It, I, that's right. I wasn't around then, but uh, <laughs> James McKelvey uh, was a building commissioner here in the city of St. Louis and started a building company back then. And so uh, to kind of celebrate, it's now our 126th year in business. No other builder in St. Louis can say that, uh, but 126 years, uh, you know, we pride ourselves on our locations, our integrity, our quality union construction, and our, uh, our designs. We've got some fabulous designs. Our three sons work with us. And, uh, you know, I know we've got one community out in Chesterfield and some of my friends say, I know, Jim, you had nothing to do with that because it's modern. <laughs> uh, too yeah. old. No, it looks great. And all that you do at McKelvey, we appreciate. We, of course, appreciate your partnership here at KMOX. And thank you for uh, the great run continuing. Uh, Tom, uh, I can't thank you enough. It was great seeing you and Angie last night. All the different charities in addition to all the sporting events you do. It's an exciting time here in St. Louis, so thank Good, you. My pleasure. Good times. Thank you, and thank you, Rose, for being here. Jim Brennan, President McKelvey Holmes, with us on KMOX. Speaking of great runs, just got word that we are going to be joined at 1145 by a woman who just attended her 67th consecutive home opener for the Cardinals, 67 in a row. That's going to close out the show today. John Moselock at 1130. Lutz Fantasy at 1115. All kinds of sports to lead off at 11. This is KMOX. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-329-2121. That's 800-329-2121. 800-329-2121. Have you scheduled your maintenance for your air conditioner for the summer to assure you and your loved ones that you will have cooling this year? If you have not, definitely do it. This is a great time to start while you're listening to me right now instead of calling me when it's 100 degrees outside and your air conditioner is not working or it goes down and you say, you know, I forgot to call Bart. It's really affordable. I mean, considering what, uh, as far as groceries, it's about, a, it's about the cost of a loaf of bread, $89. So uh, <laughs> call me. Spart Inman, one easy number in Missouri and Illinois, and the only number, 314-293-2600. Again, 314-293-2600 or bartinman.com. That's Bart with a B, Inman with an I, dot com. Spring cleaning is upon us, but there's one meaningful box that you don't throw away when cleaning out your closet. It's the box filled with your family's important videotapes, film reels, and photos. Hi, I'm Adam Baselogger. And I'm Nick Mako. We started Legacy Box over a decade ago to help families organize and update their analog media to digital. Legacy Box is simple and easy. It works and is safe. Over a million families have trusted Legacy Box. And Legacy Box has been featured in Good Housekeeping, The Today Show, and Rachel Ray. Legacy Box is like magic, converting your shoebox of memories to the cloud or thumb drive ready to watch and share. Declutter your closet by digitizing your media. Become more organized and accomplished, knowing your family's recorded past is safe forever. Take advantage of our spring cleaning sale going on now. It's the easiest task to check off your to-do list. For a limited time, you can get started for just $9 a tape. Visit LegacyBox.com value to get our $9 sale.
That's LegacyBox.com slash value to get our $9 offer. LegacyBox.com slash value. KMOX, KEZK, HD2, St. Louis. The voice of the Billikens, KMOX. Always live on the free Odyssey app. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. I'm Peter King. Six months after the Hamas attack on Israel, talks are expected to resume in Cairo. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is adamant that there will be no ceasefire until Hamas releases all of its hostages. This comes after another series of protests demanding that Netanyahu do more to obtain the release. Shani Grenot is co-founder of Hostages Family Forum, which is holding a rally just starting outside the U.N. We are marking this very, very hard day of over 180 days when they're still in captivity. We have 133 people in there still. Israel says its military is pulling some of its troops from southern Gaza. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner on the BBC. The military campaign is continuously evolving, and this is just another stage in the war efforts. As we completed our mission in uh, Khan Yunus, in the Khan Yunus area, so then the troops rotate out. U.S. Central Command says coalition forces have destroyed a drone and an incoming missile targeting ships of the Red Sea. The military says nobody was hurt. There was no damage. CENTCOM also says U.S. forces destroyed a mobile surface-to-air missile system in Houthi-controlled territory of Yemen. The Dallas area is one of the biggest gathering spots for tomorrow's eclipse. CBS Texas reporter Bo Evans is there. Members of the Texas Winnebago Club are excited for Monday's total solar eclipse. We could have watched it from home, but it's so much better being with a bunch of friends. 36 RVs and 71 friends to be exact. Club president Terry Hughes plans on making the most of it. This is the last one that's gonna be in Texas for 35 years, so this is probably my last chance that we're gonna to get to see one. Florida activists have won the right to put abortion rights before voters in November. Arizona supporters are trying to do the same. 384,000 valid petition signatures are due by July 3rd. Enthusiasm is surpassing expectations. We've surpassed 500,000 signatures from Arizona voters. Chris Love, advisor to Arizona. Arizona for abortion access is seeing a broad coalition of support. Whether you live in a metro area or a rural area, and we're counting on all of those people to put this on the ballots. Stephen Kaufman, CBS News, Prescott, Arizona. March Madness ends for the South Carolina and Iowa women this afternoon. Their NCAA championship game tips off in about three hours. Gamecocks coach Dawn Staley. There's one in a possible games left uh, for all of us. And, um, I want to win. I was Caitlin Clark. It's the national championship. It's the last game of my career. It's the last game for five people on this team. So I don't think uh, motivation will be hard to come by. This is CBS News. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. Get the parts and service you need fast from the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Mid-America's most trusted source for news. KMOX. At 11.03, we have sunny skies, 61 degrees downtown at the Arch. I'm Stuart McMillan. Our top story this hour, two South St. Louis County men face charges for Friday morning's fatal accident involving construction workers. County police say 18-year-old DeAndre Robinson of Oakville and 18-year-old Patrick Aiton of Lime were racing at a high rate of speed down South Broadway when one of their cars spun out of control. It struck and killed 34-year-old Christopher Johnson of Dittmer. The other victim, who police have not identified, suffered a head injury. Both Robinson and Aiden are charged with involuntary manslaughter and second-degree assault. Police say a naked man busted through a wall of a South St. Louis apartment Friday afternoon and threatened to kill a man and his family. It happened on Park Avenue in the LaSalle Park neighborhood. Officers say the apartment renter grabbed a gun and shot the 32-year-old intruder in the hand. The investigation continues. It's a treasured part of St. Louis history. The 114th Annie Malone May Day Parade will be held downtown on Sunday, May 19th. FINA Healthcare Director Dr. Kendra Holmes is this year's Grand Marshal. This really is a full circle moment for me from walking in the parade as a Girl Scout to now the honor of serving as the Grand Marshal. And this is about celebrating our culture, celebrating the great work that this organization is doing for our community and celebrating our city. The parade is the biggest annual fundraiser for the Annie Malone Children and Family Services. One of its event sponsors, White Castle, holding a roundup 
at the Register, a local promotion for the agency that's happening until April 30th. Some people excited about Monday afternoon's Great American Eclipse. Others would rather just mow the lawn. Count Missouri State University astronomer Mike Reed among the former group. Reed says places with totality may get up to four minutes of darkness. It will get 10 to 15 degrees cooler, so it will become nighttime. Quite often that can build up. You'll get some extra wind. The night critters will start to make their night sounds, and, and it, it's really quite, um, it's a bit surreal, actually. Meteorologist Dave Murray says Farmington, Missouri should have 100% coverage, while the St. Louis metro area gets about 98%. He says, while that 2% may not sound like much, there is a world of difference between the two. Other towns priming for totality include Poplar Bluff, Cape Girardeau, Carbondale, and Effingham. Brad Choate, KMOX News. Weather for this afternoon, clouds and sunshine. Otherwise, uh, possible shower this afternoon during the Cardinals game, possible as well. High around 74 degrees today, turning out partly cloudy tonight, low around 51. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and warm. A high around 79, temperature can drop a couple degrees during the eclipse, so that'll be nice. A little bit of a cool off. Right now, 60 degrees in Florissant, 63 in St. Peter's, 61 degrees with some clouds, a little bit of sun downtown at the Arch. I'm Stuart McMillan, KMOX News. This is the Green Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Goldsmith swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Green Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Silicon the Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. We have some breaking news with the St. Louis Cardinals. Drew, why don't you cue that up? This is what Ollie Marmel said to me last hour when I asked him about Sonny Gray. Yeah, we're actually going to sit out as soon as we hang up here and, and discuss uh, that very topic of what, uh, what's that going to look like for him um, moving forward. And we should have an answer here shortly. And shortly, indeed, uh, Ollie Marmel has told the media at Bush Stadium that Sonny Gray is going to start on Tuesday against the Phillies. He is going to pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals. This is something that he brought up on the home opener that day. He said, if it were up to me, I'd pitch in St. Louis and skip this rehab start and just go. Basically is what he said. And the Cardinals decided to talk to him. They expected him to want to compete and be in that uh, frame of mind. And now he is, according to Ali, 100% himself. Katie Wu of The Athletic just quoted Marmel as saying, Sonny is as direct and honest of a human as you can encounter. If he says he's 100% himself and ready to go, I trust that. So Sonny Gray is going to make his Cardinals debut Tuesday against the Phillies. Pitch count around 65. If he throws as efficiently as he can, that could be five, maybe even six innings. Probably five uh, for Sonny Gray. Pretty cool stuff. And uh, the the Cardinals are going to be a lot better with Sonny Gray in their rotation. A lot better. No offense to anybody else. He's just their best pitcher, and he's one of the best pitchers in the game. So the Cardinals will make some moves accordingly when that happens, and I think their bullpen gets better as a result. I think the whole team gets better as a result. And there will be pitchers in reserve because things do happen. So you'll have a lot of opportunities for starts down the road from others, but Sonny Gray jumps in there. Pretty cool. So that would be the rotation back together, Gray with Michaelis and Lynn and Gibson and Mats in, in whatever order they decide to, to go. But that's where we are with Matt starting yesterday and Gibson starting today for the Cardinals against the Marlins. Cards go for the sweep. We have the game for you coming up at 1.15 with the pregame at 12.20. It'll be Kyle Gibson pitching today against the Miami Marlins tomorrow the Cardinals will take on the Phillies at 645, and Miles Michaelis will pitch. And then Sonny Gray has been inserted into the rotation for Tuesday's game against the Phillies, who are throwing Zach Wheeler. Oh, baby. What a matchup that is at Bush Stadium on 640 at 645. Cardinals are five and four on the season. First time they've had a winning record in quite some time, early last year. So it has been a long time. They actually, it was their third game of the year. They were 2-1, and one, if I recall. That's the last time they had the winning record. The Cardinals and the Marlins. Also going on is the Final Four. We talked so much about St. Louis sports last hour. I didn't give you my deep thoughts here on the Final Four. So two things. One, the Iowa Hawkeyes will give undefeated South Carolina all they can handle tonight. Actually, it's this afternoon. 2 o'clock is the tip in that one. 
That is going to be a fantastic basketball game. South Carolina uh, took care of business beating NC State, had a little bit of trouble holding off Indiana, a team that beat Iowa earlier this season. In fact, they're the last team to beat Iowa, but they were up 22 on Indiana in the second half. Indiana was bombing threes, got back into it very quickly, cut it to two, ended up losing by four. Got to imagine South Carolina does not want that to happen again. This is a different deal. You got Caitlin Clark playing at the very end of her career for the Iowa Hawkeyes in the national championship game. Look out. I mean, this is, you know, her stage. This is let her win the game for you. This is going to be must-watch television this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Should be a great game. South Carolina is phenomenal. They're undefeated. And Iowa is resilient and tough and quick, and they move the ball so well on offense. They are an absolute joy to watch. And then tomorrow night, it's UConn against Purdue. This is a fascinating matchup because you have two big men. Everybody pays attention to Zach Eady, and rightfully so. Zach Eady is a big man. He's 7'4", 300 pounds, but he moves extremely well. Uh, he, I think for his size, he's a great athlete especially in the half court, gets up and down the floor. He can block shots. He can alternate shots. The problem is he's running up against another very good big man, Donovan Klingen. Klingen is 7'2", 280 pounds. That's what he's listed at. This is a classic big man, head-to-head, -head, like Georgetown, Houston back in the day. You guys know, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who watched back in the day, Patrick Ewing against Akeem Olajuwon, and they ended up meeting again in the 1994 NBA Finals, Knicks Rockets. But anyway, this is classic big man basketball. Today is going to be kind of the, the prep for those teams, getting ready on how they're going to face each other. But I think it comes down to the two big men. And if anyone can give Zach Eady trouble, it's Klingon. Klingon is something else. So it's going to be a blast to watch that one. If I had to take a guess on that one, I'd say UConn wins it. I don't know how you can pick against them at this point. They have been running people over right and left. But Purdue is a tough team with a brilliant coach in Matt Painter, and they are fun to watch when they are clicking on offense. They're really, really fun. So the, the problem, though, that they run into is UConn does not have to double Zach Eady. They don't need to have someone shadowing and trying to front and catch a pass in front of Zach Eady. They have Klingon. So they can guard Edie with one guy and then guard the other four guys. They don't have to leave somebody open, but we'll see, I, you know, who knows? And they're also a very good defensive team and they can explode offensively. That UConn team is scary, scary good. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we will be visited by Lutz Fandensteel, sporting director, St. Louis City SC. 0-0 zero, zero draw last night at City Park. Lutz will talk to us. Then John Mosellock at 11.30. And we'll have all kinds of stuff for you. The sports world is just exploding, not only around here, but around the country. We'll get you updated on everything. Sports on a Sunday morning on KMOX continues right after this. Hi, this is Steve Butts with the Crawford Butts Insurance Agency. I know we're all experiencing sticker shock when you get your insurance premium. Now more than ever, you need an independent insurance agent to find the best value for your family's insurance needs. Crawford Butts, family owned and operated for more than 60 years. Please give us a call at 314-752-2500 or at CrawfordButts.com. Life is challenging and ever-changing. Take control with passive income through real estate investing. Learn how. Learn now. Let Dell Wamsley and Lifestyles and Limited's investors and mentors show you. Meet Dell's team live in St. Louis two days only at the Hilton Frontenac, Saturday and Sunday, April 27th and 28th. Register now at GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. That's GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Enter promo code 2024 for a special discount offer. GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Code 2024. Nobody wants a surprise in their jelly donut. It's toothpaste? That's because the middle is the most important part. At Graybar, we're at the middle of electrical and data comm jobs across the country, connecting installers, facility managers, and business owners with smart solutions for their most challenging projects, which means stocking and delivering crucial products on time and on budget with no surprises, thanks to our nationwide logistics network. Yep, Graybar does that. 
SNL Coin. We buy gold and silver coins, silver and gold jewelry. Also buying gold filled and silver plates. Before you sell, call SNL. 314 544 3600. 314 544 3600. SNL Coin. Schedule your free tree inspection from Gamma Tree Experts now. I'm Tim Gamma. Our certified arborist and horticulturist are ready to meet you in preparation of the coming season. Winter is always hard on a lot of trees here in St. Louis. If you have a tree that you're really concerned about, let us come take a look at it for free. I'm Tim Gamma. Give me a call at 725-6159. That's 314-725-6159. Your trees deserve the best care from Gamma Tree Experts. Nick Dalbo with Nicholas Dalbo Real Estate. Are you selling your home? As a full-service broker with 35 years of real estate experience, we are positioned to beat the competition on price and service. Visit nickdalbo.com to schedule a consultation so we can discuss why now is the best time to sell your home with Nicholas Dalbo Real Estate. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been hurt on the job, you don't need the biggest law firm. You need the best. Underlaw, voted 2023's best law firm in St. Louis, is the insurance company playing games, trying to deny the medical treatment you need, refusing to pay your lost wages? Let Underlaw fight for the benefits you deserve. Injured on the job? Call Underlaw for free. 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. I have a question regarding air conditioning. What temperature outside does it need to be? before you turn or your spouse or your dad or mom, grandma, grandpa, or whoever is in charge of the um, thermostat. What temperature outside is your air conditioning turn on? My house, it's when it gets over 70, 72 degrees, the air conditioner is without a question coming on, especially if it's 70 or 72 degrees uh, in the evening when I'm getting ready to uh, go to bed. I need it at 68. That's me. How about if I told you there was a way that if you did call me and I showed you how you can keep your temperature where you want it, where you're comfortable, and maybe not spend any more. If you're interested, then call me. Spart Inman, 314-293-2600 or spartinman.com plus 0% for 60 months on the brands that we offer you. Welcome back to the Gray Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Those big swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Bar, your distributor for electrical and data com needs. Billikens win! Billikens win! Once again, from the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. The button push, out swing your top of the oh. six, hit it all, Roman Murphy! Time and save the first push! I don't believe it! That was better than the last thing. Unbelievable, Roman Murphy! Absorbing things like a SpongeBob mascot, watching a microplastics PowerPoint. Well, that's good, but uh, how about the the voice crack for uh, Joey Zanaboni? Boy, was he revved up yesterday about that save and more. And that was City in a scoreless draw with FC Dallas. And joining us to talk about that and more is the sporting director of St. Louis City SC. He joins us every Sunday at eleven fifteen. Hello, Lutz Fan and Steel. How are you doing? Not bad, Tom. How are you? Doing great. What did you think of yesterday? Well, you know, it's obviously a bit frustrating if you can't score, uh, especially if you create lots of chances. Um, I mean, we had uh, two uh, XG's expected goals. Uh, we had 27 shots and unfortunately couldn't finish. Um, on the on the good side, uh, we kept a clean sheet. We already had that, that takeout. Uh, Roman Birki played a fantastic game, had four really good saves. Uh, but it, it's a home game, and of course, you want to win the home game. But yesterday, you know, comparing it to the game last week, we, we created chances. It's now uh, really, we have to also finish them to reward ourselves. Um, we had a lot of possession, created the chances, especially in the last part of the game, hit the crossbar with Klaus, Sandler, and came on at two good chances as well. So it was out there. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, a good step forward. And, yeah, let's, we have to work hard to get the next one. Busy goalkeepers in that one. I've got you down for 24 shots, seven shots on target, nine corner kicks. That sound about right. And uh, certainly keeping Pius busy, but he was really good, as was Berkey. Yeah, both keepers were the outstanding, you know. I mean, also the 230 safe pass mate, especially 
the one from Klaus, which he clawed out of the top corner, uh, was 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 really good. So we kept him busy. We had lots of shots on target. Uh, some easy saves. Uh, Roman uh, had uh, more difficult saves to make, to be honest. But definitely a game of two very good goalkeepers. Yeah, Berkey with his tenth clean sheet with City over the past two seasons. What an incredible uh, number that is. And you also have not lost at City Park this year. You've only lost there once in the last 10 matches. Those are remarkable numbers, but I know you want some of those three-pointers. You want to start getting some Ws. It was an entertaining game, I would say, for a scoreless draw. I, I attended one against LAFC last year that I would say the same thing about. A little bit of a different kind of a game. Uh, but th those scoreless draws can be entertaining. Yeah, I know. If you're used to, to baseball and ice hockey, of course, it's much higher scoring games where there is always something happening. But yeah, in, in, in soccer, I think a little little can have, a, can have some good quality and can have some good chances as well. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's very early in the season, uh, to be fair. I always give an example about Seattle, which are uh, they starting every year. Uh, pretty slow uh, and in the end they are they're going to the finals or coming really far so it's a uh, it's a long season with 34 games we're not that that far in yet um yeah on the on, on, on the good side we only lost one game but as you said you're getting three points for a win uh, it automatically pushes you forward be three points away from from the third place so it's uh, it, it's very early to to, to stay uh it, 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 you know it's good it's bad are we not playing well are we playing really well uh, that's something which uh, which the next week we will we will we, we'll be thinking in blocks. We think in blocks of five games. Now we are in the second part of the of that of that block, and and we just have to really try it. I'm I'm feeling a bit for Klaus because he he worked hard yesterday. You know, I thought he plays actually a good game uh, offensively, defensively, made room, got into the right spaces to score, and then it was a save or it was the crossbar uh, which just kept him out. So for him, it's, it's, it's really important to, to get that goal out of open play. Um, and then we will see a Klaus again who will score more goals. Uh, Ostrak, who can score, obviously did not because there were no goals in this game, but he is some player. I mean, I was watching video of the game last night. He was kind of all over the place, wasn't he? Yeah, Thomas, you know, you also need to think a little bit about his current position and where he plays on the field. So when you brought him in, he was more a player who played more in the front third. Now he plays more as a central midfielder, six, eight, uh, so a bit more also in, in, in the center next to Chris Durkin, which worked really well. I thought he was uh, probably one of the best games he ever played so far for the club yesterday. Probably he's definitely his best game of the season. So there's a lot of uh, good movement in, in, in with Thomas as well. You know, I mean, when we brought him over from Germany, he was a player with a very high ceiling. But this season so far, he, he does a great job. And yesterday, I think he he was for me actually he was he was personally my man of the match, uh, not taking away from from Roman that he kept us in the game with three or four world class saves. No, I totally get that. And, and Durkin, Durkin's a good player, man. I mean, it, he he comes over and has been a big addition for you. What did you think of Durkin? Well, he's a machine, like a, a true machine. You know, like an engine in the in the center. I mean, he works hard. He he runs his his socks off every single time, every single training session. It's just a very important piece uh, to have in there, like a like a, a player who never gives up, a player who also comes in every single session, every single game with a very big mentality, and that helps us a lot to have a, a player in there. Which is good when it comes to strategy. It's good when it comes to winning balls. It's good when it comes to pick up second balls. So it's definitely for us a really important transfer. Roman, I always like to see what he says because I, I I really respect his leadership and what he says. He said, we definitely have to get back to being a team that's hard to beat in the last few weeks. We weren't that team today. We weren't a team. Roman can survey as well as anybody and see the field from his perspective. What do you gather from his comments there? Yeah, you know, it's uh, like everybody has a perspective after the game. Um, I'm pretty sure that we're still a team which is very difficult to beat. Uh, but it's it's not just about not being unbeaten. It's about also winning games, you know. Or, uh, as you said, a draw. A draw is, yeah, you don't lose. But on the other hand, it just does, it just gives you that one point and not the three points. And yeah, if you put it on a, on a, on a in mathematics, obviously, you know, it's uh, you're playing three games draw. It's the same as you're winning one. So it's a big difference. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, we know we have areas areas to improve, but it's also uh, we have areas which 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 we can build on. And and I thought yesterday, uh, despite the result, you know, don't get me wrong, Tom, I'm not happy with the result. I wanted to win that game uh, against the Dallas team, which was so far or is in trouble this season. Um, but that we, we, we didn't accomplish. But when, when it comes to the way we played, the chances we created, I mean, you, you looked at the stats, you just mentioned the stats before. Uh, it was it was there for us to grab, and we just have to finish better. Yeah, and you get into those dangerous areas as many times as you did, you're going to be fine. I mean, that's, that's exactly right. And you have to feel good about that. Uh, and then finally, that also revs up the crowd quite a bit. I mean, they love that stuff. Uh, what did you think of the crowd last night? And I'm sure you were well aware that some of those people probably came over from the Cardinals, maybe even did a little double dip of Battlehawks and City. Downtown was nuts last night, just nuts. I mean, the fans were everywhere, Lutz. Yeah, when I, when I drove back after the game, it took me like uh, like a half an hour more than it normally would take me. It was still so busy on the streets. Yeah, the crowd was fantastic as always, you know, a little draw against Dallas and the team still walks the usual lap with people are still waiting in the stadium and still, uh, you know, like communicating to the players. So it was, it, was, it was great as always. Yeah, good time. So I appreciate this visit as always. Thank you for being with us. And another one coming, a Sunday game this time. You get Austin on Sunday. So good luck with that and we'll catch up with you then. Thank you, Tom. Great to talk to Lutz Fantasy always, Sporting Director, St. Louis City SC. What a fun product they have over there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it's a visit with Cardinals President of Baseball Operations, John Moselock. He joins us live from Bush Stadium. They're going for the sweep today, taking on the Miami Marlins. Back after this, you're listening to Sports on a Sunday Morning on the home of the Cardinals, KMOX, sponsored by Graybar. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. At Neovitin, we are all about supporting your nutrition, and that's why we are excited about our new Neovitin Omega-3 supplement. Neovitin Omega-3 is formulated with 1,200 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids to help support healthy hearts. Our high-quality omega-3 fish oils are sourced from wild caught fish and tested for heavy metals. With our convenient monthly subscription, you can get Neovitin Omega-3 delivered right to your door every month with no long-term obligations. Support your daily nutrition and sign up for a Neovitin Omega-3 subscription at neovitin.com today. What keeps you up at night? If it's a new diagnosis or an aging parent or just being home alone, our St. Louis-based ACM Care can help. Their RNs will listen to you, advocate for you, and get you through this. ACM Care is a nonprofit based right here in St. Louis. They've been helping St. Louisans for over 24 years, and they want to help you too. The first call is free. You can reach them at 314 293 0697 or acmcare.org or Google them. ACM Care will get you care. Kingdom OX Weekend at your service. Sponsored by Air Comfort Service Heating, Cooling, and Installation. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at hymns, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face conversations. 
To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. Hey, it's Bo Matthews for Beast Plumbing, your new plumber. Whether it's plumbing, water heaters, clogged drains, or water treatment like water filtration and water softeners, call on the best. That's Beast Plumbing, 314-500-LEAK. That's 314-500-LEAK. Amy Mark scores here, and I can see clearly thanks to the doctors of Ophthalmology Associates the doctors you should trust with your eyes. Call 314-966-5000 or youreyedoc.com. Broadcasting from the underlying three lawyers. Get Jim.com studios. KMOX. Out on the field, Jerry Kelly was never one to guarantee a win, but the company he retired to build guarantees a home run every time you call. Thank you for choosing Jerry Kelly. Open eight to eight, eight full days a week. Jerry Kelly Heating and Air Conditioning also guarantees next day service. Need new equipment installed? Little maintenance to get your system purring again? We'll be there within a day of your call. No ifs, ands, excuses, or getting scradoodled. Guaranteed. JerryKelly.com Welcome back to the Gray Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Old Smith swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Gray Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Billiket's win! Billiket's win! Once again... From the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. 1131, great to have you back on the show. Sports on a Sunday morning on KMOX. Dan Reardon with a Masters preview coming up at 1145. Looking forward to catching up with him right now. It is the president of baseball operations of the St. Louis Cardinals, John Mozalock, back on the show. Mo, thanks again for doing this. We appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good morning. Good morning. Got to see your guy, Adam Wainwright, play last night, opening for Zach Brown. And I'm here to tell you, he has a future as a country music star. He was fantastic in front of a sold-out crowd. Yeah, I heard it was a fun show, so that's awesome to hear. Yeah, good. And we raised money for Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital. Good times. Wayno retired last year. Your rotation received three new members, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, and Sonny Gray. I spoke to Ali Marmel last hour, and he said, right after we hang up the phone, I'm going to visit with Sonny, and we will figure out a course of action for him. I understand, Mo, that he has spoken to reporters, Ali has, and has revealed that Sonny is going to start this week in St. Louis. Yeah, I think he gets the uh, Tuesday start. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we originally penciled him to go to Memphis, but he felt like just the work he got in down in Springfield – way his body's feeling he feels like he's ready to go and contribute so that's exciting and uh obviously i look forward to him uh donating the uh birds on the bat and and making the start for the st louis cardinals on tuesday i think that'll be really great and um yeah obviously uh we'll deal with the corresponding move when time comes but in the meantime i think that's exciting news for us it is and you know you went out and got him you wanted him to anchor your rotation and here he is and it, explain, if you would, that process, too, so, so people understand the care and the detail that goes into the rehab process, but also listening to the player because the player understands his body. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about the, the process and you know how detailed our medical team is, and, and really at all professional levels, these guys are... Uh, they're pros. They're well educated. They they know how to get people back onto the field. I think that the trickiest part and the greatest unknown is sometimes understanding, you know, how a player reacts to X, Y, and Z in terms of injuries, recovery, and and where they are. And you know, in my experience, I've been doing this for a long time. Sometimes you get um, um, honest answers, and sometimes you don't get the most honest answers. And so. You're really trying to read the tea leaves on, on how best to go with that. So spend some time with Sonny this morning, talk through, um, you know, really just, you know, the expectations and, and saying, hey, look, we have to trust you. If you think you're ready, then we'll, we'll give this a shot. You know, medically, they're always going to take the safer approach. Um, time is always on your side in that regard. But um, I think Sonny just felt like based on how he threw down at Springfield, that like he's ready for that next step. Cardinals taking on the Marlins this afternoon, and it'll be Kyle Gibson. How about Kyle starting out his Cardinals career with seven innings? That's exactly what you went out to get him for, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, you, you want your starters to go deep into games because what does it do? It, a, it shortens games, and then it keeps that bullpen uh, fresh. I think the one thing that people don't realize at, at the professional level is you play 162 games over 187 days, and so – 
you know, every given day, we don't necessarily have like our, our full bullpen or we're at full strength. And, and so as a manager, you're always sort of left trying to navigate the best hand you have on that given day. And, you know, ideally you can give certain players days off, not have to use them. And so um, then when you do need them or need to call upon them, they're ready to go. And, and then you feel like you are working at full strength. So, you know, Gibby start last week was huge. It was uh, um, something that, that gave us a little space. You know, really when you look at our schedule too, with having every Thursday off in the month of, of April, it does give us a little bit of, of, you know, a nuance where we can help sort of shuffle and stay fresh, which is nice because, you know, we do have a challenging schedule starting on the West Coast and having to go back out to the, to the Western time zone here um, at the end of this homestand. It does give us a little bit of breathing room in terms of trying to keep that bullpen fresh. So that part is, uh, even though we have a tough schedule, in a way, uh, having those off days is, is definitely fortuitous. And that's a really good point. Your, your bullpen, Keenan Middleton, was a big addition, too, in this offseason. He was somebody that you could have near the back end of your bullpen. What is the latest with him, Mo? How is he doing? You know, I, 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 I ran into him yesterday. He definitely says he feels like he's getting over the hump and, and getting closer. So... He'll be reassessed early this part of this week, and then hopefully he can be, begin a throwing program and uh, we can get him back because, to your point, yeah, he was signed to be a high-leverage reliever. And, you know, unfortunately, for the month of April, we're not going to have him. But um, if we can have him for the next five months, that'll be great news. You've been able to navigate these injuries so far. You had in your lineup on opening day and yesterday all these young players, Walker, Wynn, Gorman, uh, you know, Herrera. Scott Herrera. I mean, it's it's really something. And now here comes Lars. I mean, Lars is close, isn't he? He is close. Um, he's he's playing today. Uh, we'll see how that goes, and we'll make a decision post game tonight on, on what's next. You know, I think like the one thing for him is you got to realize he missed a lot of spring training. So, you know, all day of bats we can get him um, before he comes back is I think critical. The one good news is he does feel good. Like he has no discomfort. He feels like from a physical standpoint, he's ready to go. The key is, is where is he from a timing standpoint? And that, that'll be factored in as we make this next decision. And, uh, but yes, I, I do feel like, you know, Contreras, he could go today if you had to, but we're just giving him one more day just to, because we can. And, you know, Herrera's playing well. So it gives you the opportunity to, to, to rest players when you need to. So, I do agree with you, though. It's it's kind of interesting how you know this young group has is, is brought some energy for us and it's come up with some big hits and uh, some big plays defensively, and it's it's been fun to watch. Herrera certainly looks the part, and he looks like a hitter. He looks like a catcher. It's because he is. He's put in a lot of work. Ollie talked about that extensively last hour. And it, just to get your read on Brendan Donovan's bounce back, too, was that expected that he would be able to, to be okay? Yeah, we certainly assumed it would be. Um, you know, he was down in Jupiter for majority of his off season, so you know we had hands on him, working with him, and, and we had a pretty good feel that that he was in a good spot. So I'm not overly surprised um, how he's playing. Uh, he's a baseball player. I mean, he's one of those guys that kind of reminds me of a rusty nail, like you know, just tough, gritty, and uh, you know, loves the game. He really does. And I told him at one point early in spring training where he dove and fell on that arm. I'm like, well, I guess you're okay. I mean, he's, you know, he's diving into the home plate. He is a, a gamer for sure. Tommy Edmond is too. And I know this has got to be frustrating for him and, and for the organization too. But again, you will have to preach patience here. This is, and Carlson throw him into there too. And I guess to an extent, Matt Carpenter, because an oblique, you always have to be careful with, don't you, Mo? Yeah, I think like like starting with Tommy. I mean, I mean, I think we were all a little bit surprised that that you know where he's at in the sense of like when we got down to spring training. But now that we know what we're dealing with and and we kind of know where we are, I am pretty optimistic that like he's going to be able to start taking you know major steps forward. And, and so I think that's good news. Uh, he's getting his his grip strength back, which is is vital to taking those next steps. So. I'm encouraged at where he's at, and, and I definitely, uh, you know, can see the end of, uh, of of his tenure on the IL um, if I squint hard enough. That it it seems like in reason. I think uh, Carlson is going to have a, a big week this week to take that step forward. So um, be exciting to see how he responds to that. And Carp, 
Karp has assured me this is not a big deal. So I'm, I'm going to take him at his word. He knows his body as well as anyone. So, um, you know, fingers crossed it's uh, shorter rather than longer. Good to hear. It was great to see him last night. He was at the show last night, too. And uh, finally, I wanted to wrap with this because I don't think that he gets enough attention, but I've kept my eye on him. I Obviously, you all have. Pedro Pies is a good catcher, and he has made it to the majors. I know he's been through this uh, hard work and climb to get to where he is. Could you d- maybe describe your feelings about Pedro and how far he's come as you've tried to identify who that third catcher will be? Well, he's always been someone in our system that, that from a defensive standpoint, has, has always graded out very well. Um, he's also probably like every team he ever plays on, like one of the, the, the favorite teammates. So managers, coaches, players alike, they, they, they all love him, appreciate him. Um, he's, he's just one of those guys that works extremely hard. Um, never wants a day off, uh, you know, understands his role, but I mean, it's exciting to get called to the big leagues and, and for someone like that to, to be rewarded in this way, I think is, is a great story, but you know, I think he has a uh, many, many chapters ahead of him. Um, I do think uh, he'll find a slot at some point at the major league level, which is exciting to see. Um, but like, he's one of those guys like in spring training, he shows up early, stays late. And uh, you know, something that every organization is grateful to have guys like him around. Yeah, uh, very well said. Thanks for the time as always. It was great to see you on opening day. Good to visit with you today and good luck. Go get a sweep. All right. Thank you. John Mosellock, Cardinals president of baseball operations, always gracious to join us and break down the Cardinals for us, answer our questions about the club. A lot of health things going on, you know, just they just they got to get healthy, but somehow they've been able to manage a five and four record and hopefully uh, for Cardinals fans, they can keep that gas pedal down. We'll take a break when we come back. Oh, my gosh, it is that time. The Masters on CBS. Uh, It's coming up. The Masters is fast approaching. And Dan Reardon, KMOX's senior golf editor, is going to be in Augusta. He gives us a preview live. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other things that are happening today. There's a lot. Back after this. Progressive presents good news, bad news, dumb news, then great news. Good news. A letter in your mailbox says you could save money bundling your home and auto insurance with Progressive. Bad news. You saw it after your teenager backed the car into the mailbox. Dumb news. A new mailbox, basically a box on a stick, costs up to 400 bucks. Great news. You decide to see if you could save money bundling at Progressive.com and go with paperless mail instead. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. You collect baseball memorabilia. 16 bobbleheads and counting. Have a closet full of jerseys. Number seven, that's my favorite. And let's not forget. My rally towels. Now, King of Moex and Rawlings are celebrating you, the loyal fan. You could win tickets to an upcoming game and $100 from Rawlings. Get entered now at KingofMoex.com slash contest. Just upload a photo of you decked out in your game day attire. I'm the best fan. I'm the best fan. The best fans in baseball. Presented by King of Moex and Rawlings, the mark of a pro. On Friday, April 19th, the Cardinals host the Milwaukee Brewers. That night, 25,000 fans, ages 16 and older, will leave with their very own bobblehead of the young and upcoming Cardinals star, Jordan Walker. This collectible bobblehead is presented by Central Bank and is sure to be a must-have for your bobblehead collection. That's Friday, April 19th. The Cardinals, the Brewers, and the Jordan Walker bobblehead. For tickets or details, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. This is Jordan Walker, St. Louis Cardinals for the Roof. 
There's the eighth strikeout for Lynn. The Cardinals host the Brewers the weekend of April 19th through the 21st. Join us at the ballpark on Saturday, April 20th, when 25,000 fans, 16 and older, will take home their very own Cardinals full zip jacket, courtesy of Mercy. This exclusive Navy jacket sports the STL logo on the chest, and it has many elevated features. That's Saturday, April 20th. For tickets and more information, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. This is Lance Lynn, the St. Louis Cardinals for the Lou. This is Chad Clayman with ClaymanGroup.com, K-L-A-M-E-N Group.com, where we buy property in as-is condition. Are you wanting to sell your property, but you don't want to deal with the stress? Many times people sell to us because they want to be a less stressed seller and they want to simplify their solution. We can provide a flexible closing date on your sale and we can make it easy to sell your property. We can guarantee we'll give you our best offer possible to make a win-win situation. If you have a house you want to sell, simplify your sale, K-L-A-M-E-N Group.com. With the new year, it's time to make sure you have the best vision for 2024. That means scheduling your annual eye exam with Ophthalmology Associates. Call 314-966-5000. Cinderella Starry, out of nowhere, a former Grangekeeper now about to become the Masters champion. Welcome back to the Green Bar Sports on a Sunday morning. Those mid swings and he hits a drive. He hits a slammer. Green Bar, your distributor for electrical and data comm needs. Once again, from the Stiefel Financial Sports Studio, Tom Ackerman. Is that a Caddyshack clip you just threw out there, Drew? Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, it is the start of the golf season. I know the PGA Tour has already been rolling, and we have been following golf, but this is the beginning for many of us. It is the first major of the year. The Masters begins this week. And joining us on the line is a man who will be covering it once again. Our KMOX senior golf editor, nobody does it better than Dan Reardon on KMOX. How are you, Dan? I'm doing fine, Tommy. You know, I think I'm correct. This is the latest the Masters can be on the calendar, and it's very late this year. I mean, we've had Masters fall on Easter Sunday, but it's always the first full week in April. And I think uh, Sunday the 7th would make it the last, the, the latest it can possibly be on the calendar. And that actually affects the way the tournament is played because the condition of the golf course in early April to late April or mid April, I should say, will be a little bit different. They have a good weather forecast except for Thursday, but it's an unusual, an unusually late Masters, I think. Mm. Well, let me take a look at that forecast as you just uh, mentioned. So Thursday, oh yeah, you got a little rain there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the weather, I mean, the weather all week is supposed to be generally good. The temperatures in the seventies. So unless they would get, and I, what I saw was around a half inch, unless they would get something changed dramatically, that's not going to really affect the golf course too much. The, the greens will be no different at all. You may get a little softness in the fairways. Well, I've been putting it off for years, and I won't be there this year, but eventually I will make it uh, to Augusta National and attend the Masters and watch this incredible tournament unfold. And what would be, let me ask you this. You've been going there for years. When I arrive at Augusta at some point, and again, not going to do it this year, but I will, what would be the biggest surprise that I would find seeing it in person? Nobody ever can appreciate the change in elevation uh, that's present at the golf course. Everything flattens on television uh, considerably. So, um, and that's why I say if you go to the Masters once, you do everything that you need to do to enjoy the tournament going forward. But to appreciate the shots that the players are playing, you have to appreciate the amount of elevation. And it's not so much going downhill or uphill, although on, on nine, it's, it's a, at 18 is starkly uphill. But I, I think that's what the biggest surprise to people always is. How diff- and, and, and by the way, that plays into the story of the week, which is Tiger Woods, because it is the most difficult golf course on the PGA Tour annually to walk. How is Tiger feeling? And obviously, he's ready to play. Well, he announced a, a caddy. He's got a caddy that used to work for Matt Kuchar and some other players on tour. So that was announced today. Uh, he played uh, a, a, by reports a week ago with Justin Thomas. There was a report from Nota Begay that while the ankle and the foot were fine, as Tiger has learned to adapt to the fused ankle, he now is developing back soreness. And we know that he went through last year. Now that was that was related to the ankle. That was related to the sur- the surgery. Uh, the back problems have always been with him, and they be, now be exaggerated because he has to walk a little differently. 
uh, in order to accommodate what he has done infusing that ankle. So uh, there's a big question mark still sitting out there, not whether he can win or make the cut, but whether he can walk 72 holes at Augusta. He hasn't done them in a while. Wow. Dan Reardon joining us. Uh, he will be following the Masters, which gets underway this Thursday. The favorites in this one, I got to think Scotty Scheffler is one of two or three, along with John Rahm, Rory McIlroy. Would that be your top three? I would say they're on everybody's A list. Uh, Rahm is a little hard to discern because, you know, he doesn't play on the PGA Tour anymore. So we have less of a read on his game. And, and, and with all due respect to LIV, the 54 hole no cut events don't give us a, a real feel for where he is specifically. The one trend that we have currently going on at the masters is people who have won the masters in the last well, i think seven years have all been uh, first time masters winners so um you know when you talk about a scheffler he doesn't fit that category when you talk about a, about a mcelroy he definitely fits that category rory has not played well this this year particularly on tour but that may be to his benefit coming in i think a sneaky one would be wyndham clark wouldn't you, if you were to, if you were to pick somebody that might be able to make a little run here? Well, he certainly has demonstrated he's for real that the win at LA country club last year was not a, a one-off kind of event for him. And he, and he took Scheffler to the, uh, took to the justice, I think at Bay Hill, I believe it was, uh, the thing about, there's two things about Clark that it'll be interesting to see how well he fits at Augusta. The first one is that, uh, he plays it left to right. And typically the winners at Augusta have people that draw the ball, hit it right to left. The other thing about Clark is he has a reasonably low ball. He, he powers the ball off the tee. Uh, and that's, that's, again, not the best fit for Augusta where the high ball is really what you want to have, particularly into the greens. So I, I think he needs to be on that list, but, uh, but he's, he will be a curiosity to see how good the fit is. There are other players that fall under that same ga- category. You know, Xander Shoffley should be on everybody's list every time he tees it up on a major, except Xander doesn't seem to get it done on Sundays. So he, he would be in that category. You know, uh, Math, Matthew Fitzpatrick has proven that he is a legitimate uh, talent coming off of a few years ago of winning the U.S. Open. So there are a number of players who have never won at the Masters who fit that description. And you're right. Scheffler is easily the best player on form coming into this championship. And people probably are saying, well, he can't putt. Well, he pretty much has handled his putting difficulties. So Scheffler should be probably drawing the biggest fields after Tiger on that first day. And to your point, Xander Shoffley, who is the world number five right now, has never won a major. But over the last, let's see, seven years, since 2017, 11 top 10 finishes in majors. 11. That's <laughs> Like, as you said, he's always on that leaderboard. He just can't get the job done. What other storylines are you following, Dan? Some intriguing master storylines as we take a look at this field. I'm curious to see in the second second full year of that, if there is going to be any LIV conversations going on. We got a lot of it last year because Kepka was leading going into the final round. So that became a big topic of discussion, not only uh during the tournament, but in, in the post round interviews to see, you know, what, what people are going to do. Uh, we have to mention that they've lengthened the second hole. Now it's the longest hole at, at Augusta national at 585. Now that plays downhill. So it, it doesn't play quite that, that length. Um, I, I would say those are the only two things that, that jump out at me. Um, it is an Olympic year. So the international field becomes uh, more of a factor. And, and talking about LIV, keep a, keep an eye on Joaquin Neiman. I think Joaquin Neiman is probably the best young talent um, uh, on the LIV tour. And he has played well there in the past. You know, he, he finished, uh, what well, I think he finished in the second 10, somewhere around 15th or 20. He finished uh, tied for 16th a year ago. He's played well there when he was extremely young. Now he's a much more mature golfer. Uh, you know, and, and then throw in somebody like a Paige Dunlop who won uh, as an amateur and turned pro and, and qualified by the virtue of his win to play in the Masters, even though he was a U.S. amateur champion. Uh, he, he's come back to form a little bit in the last couple of weeks. So there are a variety of stories, but most of them will develop through Thursday and Friday. And if weather comes into play, that will be another story as well. We'll be watching it closely. Dan Reardon about to head to Augusta, Georgia, to see the Masters. It begins 
on Thursday. Dan, before we go, we got a couple minutes left. I had Jim Brennan, the president of McKelvey Homes, in here. He was, uh, he is on the board of directors of Cardinal Glennon. We were talking about not only his business, but also last night raising money for Cardinal Glennon and Adam Wainwright's concert and, and the very the giving St. Louis community. One thing I didn't have time to ask him, he is a member of Bell Reef Country Club, is how things are going over there. I mean, time flies. We're we're two years out from the BMW, Dan. And before you know it, they'll be talking about laying the groundwork for the President's Cup in 2030. And you know what's what makes the BMW so interesting is as as discussions go forward, and I hate to keep bringing LIV into the conversation, but as the discussion discussions go forward, we don't know exactly what the qualifying or the structure will be for the uh, BMW because it's part of the FedEx Cup playoffs. So right now, none of the LIV players, other than I think Brooks Kepka, are are, are eligible. Uh, for, uh, even to score points going into that situation. So Bell Reeve will be ready physically. There's no question the course will be prepared. Um, the politics, I think, going into next year. But, you know, we were supposed to have an announcement before the Masters of what the final determination was between the Saudi group and uh, the PGA Tour. Now that's, that's no longer the case. So I, I would say that I'm looking forward to Bell Reeve, but I'm curious to know, what those circumstances will be when we get to 2026. Interesting. Appreciate the time very much. Have fun at the Masters. We'll keep in touch with you throughout the week and weekend, Dan. Enjoyed it, Tom. KMOX's senior golf editor, Dan Reardon, about to cover yet another Masters. What a year this is going to be. Actually, uh, PGA Championships within driving distance. You can get to Louisville. They're playing at uh, Valhalla this year. I may be heading over there the, the next month just to see what's going on over there. It is 11.56. It's time for us to go. Let me just review what we have learned today. First, Sonny Gray is going to start on Tuesday against the Phillies. That was announced by Ollie Marmel in the clubhouse just a little while ago after he spoke with us for a little bit here on KMOX, told us he was about to have a meeting with Sonny Gray. Well, that meeting went very well for Sonny. Uh, he and for the Cardinals, Sonny is going to start on Tuesday. He'll have a 65 pitch limit. We also heard from Chris May, the athletic director at St. Louis University, who spoke at length about Josh Schertz. The new hire is going to be introduced tomorrow on the SLU campus and also the celebration of the WNIT victory for the SLU women. And he spoke glowingly of Rebecca Tillett and the job that she has done there. At 11.15, Lutz Fannensteel was with us, sporting director St. Louis City SC, about the scoreless draw last night. And John Mosellock was very good breaking down all of the injuries and the uh, contingencies and everything the Cardinals are dealing with right now to navigate through this season so far. They are 5-4. and four. Cardinal baseball comes your way at 12.20. The truth is, planning for retirement can be overwhelming and stressful. And things like record high inflation, rising interest rates, the threat of a recession, and the possibility of Social Security disappearing all feel like roadblocks.